morning. How's everybody doing this morning? This morning, I want to talk about praise and praising Jesus and using this instrument called our voice. Today, we're going to sing about an instrument and about technology. So here it goes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus till the sun goes down. Love him, love him, love him in the morning, love him in the noontime. Love him, love him, love him till the sun goes down. Serve him, serve him, serve him in the morning, serve him in the noontime. Serve him, serve him, serve him till the sun goes down. Praise him, praise him, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him till the sun goes down. Obey Him, obey Him, obey Him in the morning, obey Him in the noontime. Obey Him, obey Him, obey Him till the sun goes down. Before we start the service or the, the lesson and the different songs or the different way God wants to move in the service, I lift all you up. I lift up Kayla, Bethany, Vika, Andre, Elizabeth, Aaliyah, and John, and all who is listening. I give you all the glory and all the praise, and I thank you in advance for what's going to take place in this service, and I pray that we receive what is being said. And most of all, that your will be done in this service. In the name of Jesus, amen. I offer this suggesting power is praise or prayer or worshiping as we were talking about worshiping with our mouths this instrument it says in matthew 15 8 through 9 it says this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me but in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men It's one thing to try to do everything perfectly, but if our heart is not connected with Jesus, then it's really in vain. So it simplicity of it is, is allow our heart to draw nine unto God or God draw nine unto us as young adults, children, doesn't matter what our age is, it matters most in our hearts. And as First Corinthians 3 through 2 says, it says, Ye are epistles, which means a letter, written in our hearts, known and written of men. Simply saying, allow our life to give him perfect praise. Allow it to enter our heart. It's not just do this because... It's expected of us or um, how it makes you feel, but it's allow it to be heartfelt when we do it. Sing these choruses, this is what I do on my daily route, as is a lot of times I don't even have the radio on and I just sing choruses. This is one way to allow God to enter inside us our heart to feel the presence of God no matter where we're at, no matter what our circumstances are. One of them I like to sing is, It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive, and it's keeping me alive, and it's keeping me alive. It's that Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive, it's keeping me alive. I like this one too. Thank God 
for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood that makes me white as snow. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood that makes me white as snow. Another one I like to sing, it says, don't you know he made a way through the wilderness and he made a way through the sea he made a way in the lion's den and I know that you make a way for me. Don't you know he made a way through the wilderness and he made a way through the sea. He made a way in the lion's den and I know that He'll make a way for me. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor. Glory and honor to him. Let's give glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor. Glory and honor to him. Here is our scripture for our lesson for this series of lessons, which most of you have been doing. I thank you for doing it. You can do it on your own time. Most of all, it's it's for you. It's not for me. Or do it unto Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. And also we have here, right or wrong, and on your own time, you can write it down just so you can practice on your own time. If you don't want to do it, you do not have to do it. It says the same thing. All scripture is given so like all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. And also here, hopes and dreams. Hope is when we really want something to happen. We want it to happen so bad, we think about it happening and imagine what it would be like if it happened. If you could hope for anything at all, what would it be? My hope is to see all of you soon. Sooner than later is my hope. Would you hope for something serious or something funny? Would you hope for it to rain, fruit crunch from the sky, or for school to only last two weeks a year? And on your own time, you could think about what you would hope for. And you can give it to Jesus, your hope for the future. The value of the word. 
our Bible. Remember last week I was talking about keeping it in our heart. Here's some pictures of different kinds of money in this world. They call it currency. Have you ever seen different kinds of money? All over the world, there are people who treasure money. They will do anything to get it and keep it. No mountain is too high or valley too low if there's money on the other side. Like where we live out here in Wyoming or the Black Hills, people used to come from all over to look for gold. They didn't matter what it took for them to come out here, but they still came out and done. Some lost their lives, some didn't. You know, there was a lot of different things that took place even in the area we live. They would go without sleep or endure extreme hardship, all for the treasure of money. What is the craziest thing you've ever seen someone do for money? These people don't realize, however, that the word of God is the greatest treasure of all. Most people are not willing to do very much to gain the treasure of God's word. What are we willing to do? This treasure, God's word. It's priceless. Nuggets are laid out for the taking. Like we were talking last week about the bread program. If we simply just do our bread program, you're actually putting nuggets into your heart. Because nobody can take that from you because it's inside you. But most people simply aren't interested. If there's anything we should protect and cherish as pricely it is god's word unlike money we don't need banks and safes to store away the word of god we hide the word of god in our hearts by studying and memorizing it today's lesson is about eternal life i'm going to read from john chapter 6 60 through 69 and it says, Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto him, Doth this offend you? What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, it is the Spirit that quickened the flesh. Profiteth nothing. Does flesh profiteth nothing? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. This is Jesus saying this. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Jesus saying, Therefore, said I unto you that no man can come unto me except if it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. And guess what Jesus said? Then Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? Are you going to go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Have you ever tried to do something that was so difficult you wanted to give up? Why don't you all of you cross your arms and say, with a disgusted voice, it's too hard. That's exactly what many of the people who were, with, were following Jesus said before they left and went back home. 
Instead of listening and trying to figure out what Jesus meant with obedient hearts, remember we've been talking about our hearts, they complained and gave up. They said, it's too hard. It's too hard. Jesus and often taught using metaphors. And a questioning voice have, what is a metaphor? Metaphors, also known as parables, uses imagery stories to teach real life lessons. For example, Jesus might tell his followers not to cover their lamps. What would this mean? What do you think it meant when he said not to cover their lamps? He was telling them to let their lights shine, a metaphor, or to be witness to others. The lamp is a metaphor for our Christian testimony. Let our light shine. Sometimes Jesus' followers would turn off their thinking cap and take his words literally. Imagine a loaf of bread, for example. One Jesus taught them about the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. Just like the manna that fed Moses' followers in the wilderness, he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. So you may eat and not die. Remember, we're talking about eternal life. The bread I provide you is my body. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Many who heard him that day thought, what did Jesus mean by this? Does he really expect us to eat his body? Is that what Jesus meant? No, that is not what Jesus was telling them at all. But many didn't want to dig any deeper. They just said, it's too hard, and they walked away. It's too hard. How do you think this made Jesus feel? How do many of you know Jesus has feelings? A few people had not walked away, so Jesus turned to the remaining 12 disciples and asked, Are you going to go away as well? Are you two? Are you guys going to go away? Or are you going to stay? Why do you think Jesus asked this? Without hesitation, Peter answered back, Where else would we go? Where else do they have to go? Where else do you have to go? What's so important that we cannot follow Jesus for that promise of eternal life? All 12 were in agreement. They believed Jesus was exactly who he said he was. Do you believe Jesus is who he said he was? And they spoke these words of hope and eternal life. Imagine that loaf of bread, Jesus. We too can find eternal life by obeying God's word. God will never ask us to do something that is too hard. He promised to never give us more than we can handle. We must treasure his word and keep it in our hearts, and we will be with him in heaven for all eternity. Remember, eternity has no end, no beginning and no ending. Why do you think so many people followed Jesus and gave up and said it was too hard? I think it's because they didn't understand it. They didn't take time to dig deeper, as it was saying. Some of them were taking it at word value, and some weren't. Do you take what I say at word value, or do you... Look into the word. Even as children, we can look into the word. How would you have responded to Jesus if he had asked you if you were leaving too? There was times in my life I didn't follow through. But that was before I really started to rely on Jesus. What steps could you take 
to do a better job to obey God's word. One step that we can do is to take time for God's word every day. Remember the questions. Why do you think so many people following Jesus gave up and said it was too hard? How would you have responded to Jesus if he asked you if you're leaving too? A lot of us would probably say, oh, I would have followed, but let's really think what we would have said. If it's something that we've never heard before, it was against what we're used to hearing and used to seeing, what, we have, what, what would have we have done? What steps could you take to do a better job to obey God's word? Like I said, I think last week, or if I didn't say it, one of the best things that we can do, but I found out just recently by taking time to give God some time in my day is when I wake up, I say good morning, and I ask, I can simply ask him, what is your will for me today? Not my will, but what is your will for me today? It doesn't matter what our age is, God has a plan for us, and God has a will for us. And just remember that Jesus is the bread of life. And in, if we follow him and allow our heart, allow God to enter our heart, we have to allow him to enter into our heart. We can have that gift of eternal life. And I believe that for all of you. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're going to talk about obedience. What are you obedient to? How many of us have a dog? Did you know a lot of owners take their dog to obedience school? To get, to do, to get their puppies to do what they are told to do. Do you do what you're told to do? For example, a worker will tell a puppy to roll over and give the puppy a treat once the puppy has successfully rolled over. That's called positive reinforcement. When we obey and do as God instructs us, he rewards us too. Our teachers, our pastors, are a lot like the workers at the obedience school. They encourage us to do what is right and help to understand how to obey God's word. God doesn't give us treats though. His rewards are what? Much greater. He blesses us, us with the things like safety, health, finance, finances, a stable family, and so much more. Just think about all the benefits there is to be an obedient to God our pastors, our teachers, our parents, and everybody that's in our life that are trying to be a positive influence to us. I want to talk about treasuring God's word. How many of you know how to spell the word treasure? It's T-R-E-A-S-U-R-E. -E. If you'd like in your own time, you can make yourself your own treasure chest, or if you have something at home, you can make into a treasure chest. You can decorate it however you want to decorate it, if there's something you would like to do. I believe, or my opinion is, is God's word is the greatest treasure we could ever find because it gives us hope for eternal life. How many of us... How many of us knows what a pledge is? How many of us remember, I don't know if they still do in school, say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Did you know you're aligning yourself with that flag? What do you pledge yourself for? A pledge is a spoken promise that the person will give 100% without wavering. How many of our um, soldiers and Marines and seamen or servicemen have pledged allegiance to the flag in our country and have given their life. 
100, 100% without wavering. Wavering. Just like the United States military, as I was saying, it holds its members responsible for following that pledge. Their pledge is to what? To protect and serve. If you like in your time, write on a whiteboard or any piece of paper, what are you pledging to? What do you treasure? Do you obey God's word? Do I listen to preaching when I have an opportunity? Do I read my Bible every day? It's something you can share with your siblings or with your parents or with whoever or within yourself and just Jesus. You can write out statements that you treasure. A lot of ways we can do a better job of treasuring God's word. And as this week progresses, I pray that we will take time to reflect with the different ways that we can do a better job of treasuring God's word. One way we can do a better job of treasuring God's word, the other day the brothers were talking about when they're watching these videos, we're not just sitting in our, our comfy clothes, but we're actually getting ready for church. That is one way we can do a better job of treasuring God's word, doing our best to give God our best. And I thank you, God, in advance for all that's taking place in the name of Jesus. I pray you're covering upon all that is listening in the name of Jesus. Amen. In service, I like to lift up all that was been said and all that was trying to be accomplished. And I thank every one of you that are listening for your time. And most of all, I like to pray for the time that we're having together. And I'd like to thank God for the time we are going to have together. And I'd like to pray for all your friends, your family, anything you treasure. And I also pray that you will consider obeying God's word every day and to place God first in your lives. Kayla, Bethany, Vika, Andre, Elizabeth, and Leah, and John, I guess what I'm trying to say to you and any other child that's listening to this video is just do your best that's all god expects from us is our best and just do it unto him and most of all try to love what you're doing for him in the name of jesus amen i am gonna leave you with this song i am the resurrection talking about eternal life the promise we have in jesus i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will never die i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will have a new life i have come to bring the truth i have come to bring you life if you, yes, you believe I do, then you shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life. In my world all men will come to know It is love which makes the spirit grow If you, yes you, believe I do Then you shall live I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life. Keep in mind the things that I have said. 
Remember me in the breaking of the bread. If you, yes, you believe I do, then you shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life.